Hello, viewer. Welcome to the last episode of the season, It's a Learning Curve. And today, for the season finale, I have a very special guest, my close friend and my boss, Dr. Francesca Saylor. She's an energetic, accomplished, self-made young entrepreneur and an inspiration to many like me. Dr. Saylor, thank you very much for being with us today. Can I request you to go ahead and tell us something about your background? Sure, thank you for that warm introduction, Trupti. Um, so I have a bachelor's in chemistry from Augusta State University and a PhD from the University of Alabama, also in chemistry with a focus on material science. For the last eight years now, or actually, it's been closer to 13 years, I've been focusing on porous materials. And I founded a company while I was still doing my PhD uh, called Through Pore Technologies, where I am the CEO currently. Our focus is porous carbon materials for various different applications. Thank you very much. This is a great background. And uh, viewers, to tell you all, I have been had an honor to have worked with Throughport Technologies since the day I landed in America. So thank you, Sailor, for the opportunity. You're welcome, Trudy. So uh, now that you have a credible experience as an entrepreneur from a technology background, how do you know that you have a right idea that is commercially viable? Because no one believes that people will come running to you thinking that your idea is a good product. So one of the things that I did was I utilized the National Science Foundation i program. So what that program really does is it encourages you to go out into the industry that you're looking to go into and really test your product viability. Just test the idea. See if people are really willing to pay for it. And the most important thing is you really have to be open to negative feedback through that program. So listen to the market itself and see if there is something that your technology can solve. If there's a problem that someone has that your technology can solve and, and they're willing to pay for. That is the key there. Yeah, so the entire objective of setting up a business is getting money. Exactly. So don't- Unless it's a nonprofit business. <laughs> Yeah, so don't be the judge of your own ideas. You know, we know that your own idea is your baby, but go out and get input from the market and see they're willing to pay for that particular right. idea. Yeah. yeah, so now that you have an experience in setting up an entire established business, what are the stages involved in founding a business and how do you make sure that you're leveraging right tools for success? So really there's, there are a lot of different stages in, in developing the business and founding the business. It really starts with um, identifying your idea, uh, verifying that it's really worth putting money into, whether that's someone else's money, your own money, or even uh, government grant money. You need to make sure that you have a really good sound idea for a business and how you're going to monetize that business. From there, I would encourage you to go through setting up a legal entity. So that protects your assets and differentiates your assets from the business's assets. Even if you personally have no real assets to speak of, it's very important to set up the business because the business protects only the business and it differentiates you from the business. Then you also need to consider how you're going to protect your intellectual property. So if you have um, some sort of idea for, let's say beyond technology, you may need some sort of trademark um, or copyright or whatever that is, beyond maybe even a patent. So protecting that intellectual property, whatever may, it may be, is probably the next most important thing, if not the first most important thing. And then from there, you also need to be able to start hiring people. I mean, you can't be an army of one. You need, you need a very qualified team um, to go above and beyond 
you know, for you. And I would encourage um, not hiring necessarily the smartest of the smart, the best of the best in your area, because sometimes those people aren't quite as loyal to you. You really need someone who's going to be flexible and pound the pavement, if you will, as hard as you are yourself. So someone who's willing to go that extra mile for you and for your company. That's fantastic. So in that line, what would be the core qualities or virtues an entrepreneur should have to seek success in his business? So the first thing I would advise against is uh, if you are the type of person who is risk adverse, to not go into entrepreneurship. <laughs> um, it's, it's not for the faint of heart. Um, you have to have a, a tough skin, if you will. So you have to uh, be able to hear negative uh, comments about your idea or your product and keep that different from you. Don't take it personally. It's really about making your product better and making your business better. So take those negatives and turn them into positives. Uh, beyond that, you also need to have natural leadership. I mean, you know, you need to have, you need to, to be a leader such that people want to follow you. People want to buy into your idea. At one point, you may need investment. Um, so you need to be able to show to people that you have what it takes to, to lead a business. Um, also, I would say you need to be flexible because sometimes you, you have to travel a lot being an entrepreneur. And that can depend on what uh, different industries you are, but let's face it, the world's quite global these days. So it's, it's necessary to be flexible with your time, um, be able to work uh, on other time zones, uh, be able to work in different countries, be, be flexible with your time, um, and also be able to multitask. There is going to be a situation where at one point or another, you're going to have to do just about everything in your company. So before you can hire enough people to help you with every single facet of your business, you will end up having to learn um, about all sorts of things that you never thought you needed to know. So, you know, everything from having to set up the legal entity, which I had no idea what that meant when I first started this, to um, you know, to how to set up tax accounts, which taxes you have to pay, the insurance, uh, health care for your employees, um, you know, a number of different, different issues that you wouldn't really think when you're, at least when you're a technologist that you'll ever have to do. <laughs> but what that does enable you, is, enable you to do is that that really allows you to respect every single person in your business because you know what it takes to do that job and you know that you don't want to do it <laughs> and without taking anybody for granted yes yes you know what it takes and you respect that person and their expertise because you know that you just know the tip of the iceberg <laughs> right right so you have to be ready to wear multiple hats be really flexible but committed and dedicated to uh, what you have started Yes, absolutely. So what kind of laws or negatives does an entrepreneur be prepared for while setting up all the business? So being an entrepreneur, you will experience extreme highs, which is wonderful, but also extreme lows. So I refer to it as peaks and valleys. Um, so the highs, I mean, you know, if you just think about having had an idea, you know, in the lab, which is how mine started out. I just had an idea that, hey, wouldn't this work better than something else? And, you know, you, you test it, you test the marketplace, you go and see that, hey, if you, if you could make that, I'd buy it, you know, that's a good, I'd, I'd, I'd like that, you know? And, um, and then when you get your first sale, start getting income, start getting validation from the marketplace. It is just, it is the best feeling that you can imagine. It's just fantastic. But then on the other side, you do have, you know, the lows, the, the negative comments, um, you know, and a, 
a lot of it is out of your control. So for instance, here we are all affected by this COVID situation. So, um, you know, in my particular instance, schools are shut down. So my children are at home. <laughs> um, it's just, it's, you know, I've had to cancel trips, you know, business trips, and I'm doing a lot of things on, on Zoom virtually. So, you know, again, this, this goes back to being flexible, but, you know, when, when everything stops and you've had a business running and you did not know, I didn't plan for a pandemic, you know, there are things that you can't avoid. Um, it sends you into a, a pretty, there's, there's a pretty, pretty big low there, but luckily, you know, everything, everything rises, you always come back up. So that's the thing is highs and lows, highs and lows. <laughs> Yeah, so we definitely have to be prepared for a lot of unprecedented times uh, uh, when you are getting into a business. And not yeah, just you, business, but any uh, situations in life. That's true. So with this mountainous journey of your business, what would be the take-home message you have for our aspiring entrepreneurs? So look into the word pivot. <laughs> Be prepared to pivot your ideas or your business or your technology and apply it to whatever is out there. Uh, be willing to solve problems. Be willing to take negative feedback. Um, that, would, that would really be my most important take home to any entrepreneur is be prepared to pivot. Because just about, I would say, not even just about, I would say all successful businesses at one point or another have had to pivot to focus on something else. And generally, when they do that, that's when they see true exponential growth. Thank you very much for this excellent session, Dr. Saylor. Thank you very much for all your insightful uh, tips on uh, how to start up a business. And with that, I would like to end this session and I would like to thank all the viewers for your overwhelming response. And I keep looking forward for your response in the future. I will be coming up with such informative and educational sessions and interviews in future. Uh, so please keep watching such exciting videos. And if you haven't subscribed till today, please go ahead and subscribe. Thank you very, very much.